everybody, we're here to talk about Adobe Spark. Yep, Adobe Spark, which we've been using a lot in social studies uh, in the last week. And we're going to get a little bit more friendly with it right now and giving you some better tips to keep moving. All right, so here we go. Here's Adobe Spark. And it's a program that allows us to do a lot of things, including uh, social media posts, making uh, different types of pay website pages, and what we've been doing, video. All right, so with the, the video, what we want to be able to do is be able to take our research and po post it into video format. That's what Spark does really neatly, really simply. So what I want you to look at is this little option. If you haven't created a new post yet, or you want to start over, you press the Create New and the video. So I'm going to do that. The screen will give us this little thing asking us to do that. We're going to hit the skip button. All right. So for social studies, the two t the themes that I've been suggesting are tell what happened or a hero's journey. All right. So down below, it gives us our little slider and our different slides to talk about. All right. So our first slide here is the who. All right. I could go in and push this little button here and it gives me an option to add video which we probably don't really need to do. Um, remember each slide only gives you about 10 seconds to talk about it so we don't need a big long explanation on video there. All right. Um, text, photos and icon. All right. So if I have uh, on this one I'm going to just work on my screen and say okay got it. I can add in a photo there so I can either upload a photo or I could find free photos here all right so here it's giving me a few different options here um, I don't really like my results I'm seeing from pixabay here so what I could look at doing and it's showing me all these different things but they're coming from different places all right onto the tools button here I want to check on usage rights and I want to be looking at labeled for reuse. All right. And it gives us other things. So here it's giving me a, a, an image from Wikipedia. Here's coming from commons.wikimedia.org. And some of these sites are blocked by our, our network for whatever reason. Okay. If you want to guarantee that your search results will actually be able to be seen, Flickr is open completely. So I could actually add a search term to my window. All right, so I'm just typing in site colon flickr.com and that my answers all to come back from Flickr. All right, if I click on this particular image, I could also visit flickr.com to download that image. Now downloading that image on Flickr is not uh, is not the whole the whole battle here because what we should be thinking about when we're borrowing other people's image is fi finding their person's name and giving them a credit. So that's the person's name. If I go back to my my slides and I go to my credits tab, I could add in that person's name and a dash and where that image came from, or the name of the title. Right, and paste that in too. All right, so then if when I go back into my page and I wanna upload my, my image, put my photo in, Oops, I haven't downloaded it yet. I push the download button here and try to get the largest version I can. And it'll show that in my folder or which is my downloads, right? So if I go back to Spark, I can then upload a photo and I can click on that and open it. So now that image is uploading and I've given proper credit to the person. If I want to add in a map, I could go to Google Maps 
and I could, let's say I want, needed to make sure that I can get, get a map that maybe shows me New York to Boston or whatever else. All right, now Google Maps is going to give me uh, a route between New York and Boston, but it's giving us that in time today. So if I change that over to walking, it's gonna change the times out a little bit. To make a partial screenshot of, on a Chromebook, hold the control, shift, and switch windows buttons. It'll then make a crosshair on, on your screen, and you can drag to select the part of the screen that you want a picture of. When you're ready to add your, your map or whatever else into your thing, look at, at your settings, uh, it, at your Adobe Spark, pick the right slide, click on photo, hit upload, and here's my screenshot that I took earlier. And it's now in my Once I'm ready to record my voiceovers, I might want one of these. It's a USB headset microphone that I can wear for my recording. All right. Once I put the USB port uh, cable into the port, the Chromebook should automatically recognize it. When I'm ready to record, I just go in and I press the red button down, uh, down below and I click and hold it. Your Chromebook may ask you to use your microphone and you want to allow it. Now that I'm clicking and holding, I'm ready to record my slides for the Industrial Revolution. It will only give me up to 10 seconds to record. Isn't this exciting? There we go, I am all done. All right, so it wants you to keep those clips short and it'll give you a message to say, hey, keep it short. I can play it back and preview it, or I can also preview it in the full screen. When I've recorded all my, my different scenes, I find it best to use the download option. When you use the download option, it will prepare an MP4 file that will download to your Chromebook. So here it will show it in my folder. I click on that. What I want to do then is also right click or two finger tap with my Chromebook and rename the file. And you want to put your, uh, uh, your, your uh, name and your class on your video. So, and what hour you, you, have, you have your class in and once you've done that, you could add it by dragging it to your Google Drive right here and follow any other further instructions from your teacher as to where and how they want that shared with you or with them. All right. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this has taught you a little bit about Adobe Spark and been pretty beneficial for you. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.